the 1723S line from Arundel Sound is a smaller version of their flagship 1723 line. While the 1723 has 8-inch woofers, the 1723S has 6.5-inch woofers. Everything else is pretty much the same between the two lines. Arundel sent me three different speakers from their 1723S line, the Monitor S, Center S, and Surround S. For bass, they sent me their Colossal 1723 2V subwoofer, which has dual 13.8 inch drivers and a vented cabinet for a full 5.1 setup. What's going on everybody? This is Cody, the Home Theater Hobbies. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna to apologize to those of you who've been waiting for this video. I know it's taken me long to publish it, but honestly, I've just been sitting down and enjoying these speakers and trying to figure out exactly what I want to say to articulate my feelings in this video. But suffice it to say, the 1723S have become my new favorite home theater speakers. And for me, that is a big deal because that's not something I normally say in any video about any pair of speakers. I've truly been impressed by a lot of different speakers because they may have some detail that I like or they look really cool or they're just more impressive than I thought they were gonna be. But these cover a lot of bases from the design to the sound quality. And I think the design does impact the sound quality. There's a cleanness to the sound that I like a lot. But um, before I get all into that, there are chapter markers in this video, so you can skip around, but I do encourage you just to watch the entire video. It might be a little bit longer than some of my typical videos because I kind of want to get a few things out there, but I really did enjoy these speakers. So don't forget to like, hit that subscription button and that notification bell just so you can be alerted anytime I upload new content. Now let's move on and talk about design. Okay, I want to start with the design because that is where you first start off when you take these out of the box. These are very well designed, very high quality speakers that I think of as not complicated, but well thought out and well executed. All of the drivers are basically the same. You have a six and a half inch woofer with a 28 millimeter waveguide tweeter, at least one of them in each cabinet, even with the surround that I have right here. Uh, the only difference with the surround is they add in some dipole speakers on each one of the sides to give you a nice surround experience. The 2V subwoofer, it's got those dual 13.8 inch drivers on each side and it has the same basic cabinet material. All of these come in two different colors, white, black, satin, or gloss finish. And I've got the black satin and white satin here. I don't have the gloss, but again, it's not complicated, but again, it is well executed. They use HDF material or high density fiberboard. And Arundel says that that material selection makes a better damped cabinet compared to traditional MDF. And I think that transfers into the sound quality because these are quiet cabinets and it yields a nice clean detailed sound. Around back with all of the speakers, they have dual five-way binding posts. So you can buy amp or buy wire them if you want to. With the surround speaker, they do include mounting hardware so you can mount it on a wall if you want. And there's a little notch at the bottom to allow the speaker wire to exit down the bottom of the speaker. So I like that, that's a nice little attention to detail. Here is the 1723 2V subwoofer. Two stands for dual because there is a driver on this side of the cabinet and a driver on this side of the cabinet, both 13.8 inch drivers. Now down here is the vent and that's vented, that's the V um, right here. And it does come with a port plug so you can seal this up if you want to. They also sell a, sell a sealed version of this. They have a 1S and a 2S, just like they have a 1V and 2V. And again, nomenclature is very easy to understand. Now this is made out of HDF, the same HDF as the speakers are made of. So this is a very nicely designed, very good looking cabinet, but it is heavy. This thing weighs 155 pounds. And as you can see, it's actually quite tall. It is basically an end table. You can use your subwoofer as an end table if you want. But um, right here on the back, you have the Avalanche 1200 IQ amplifier plate, and it has all the connections that you would look for, including unbalanced and balanced inputs, along with outputs, because you can connect another subwoofer to this. It also has a 12 volt trigger port, so you can power this on from your AV processor or receiver if you want. 
Now up top here, it has a nice little LCD screen along with a menu button, a back button, and a scroll wheel. So you can scroll around in the menus. You can change the levels, the crossover points. You can also set the EQ with this. And the cool thing about this screen is it does rotate over 180 degrees. So if you're looking down on it, trying to figure out what's going on, you can just read it. You don't have to be looking at it straight on. So that's really cool. But they also have an app, the Arendel Sound app in the Google Play Store and the uh, Apple App Store that you can go through and make all the adjustments from your main listening position. And this is actually what I use to make the adjustments because again, this subwoofer is quite heavy. One thing that Arendel mentions on the website is just how quiet the subwoofer cabinets are. They say you can place your hand on them and barely feel any vibrations. And I wanted to test that. So I took this capped bottle of water and I placed it on top of the subwoofer. And I played the opening scene from Live, Die, Repeat, Edge of Tomorrow, the Tom Cruise movie from a few years ago. It has some ridiculous bass in the first minute or so of the opening. I played it at minus five dB from reference. My family was home, so I was trying to be a little bit considerate, right? Um, and so I did that. So let's watch how this performs. Okay, this is the opening scene from Live, Die, Repeat. And what you see right here is the camera shaking on the tripod because the floor is shaking. Now right here, we get a little bit of the water actually shaking, not just the camera. Okay, this is the same scene. All I did was zoom out with the camera just so you could see how much air is exiting out of the vent. Look at those curtains moving in the background. Okay, so as you can see, that was quite impressive. My floor was shaking even more so than the bottle of water. So these cabinets are pretty quiet. Okay, now I'm not the only one that thinks this is a great design, very well built speaker. My neighbor had an opportunity to see these because he actually helped me come in and put this TV here. When I first set these up and broke them in, I did the recommended 50 hours of break in. Um, I began watching movies and I realized that the TV that I had here, which was a 55 inch TCL, just didn't quite do this enough justice. I wanted a bigger screen, so I decided to move my recently purchased uh, LG C1, the 77 inch TV that you see right here into this place. Now I don't have my current stand or the stand that I want for it because that's COVID shipping and blah, 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 blah. But I using this temporary stand. So anyways, my neighbor, he came over and he was helping me switch the TVs around and he was moving one of these speakers. He was like, Cody, are these your speakers? These are really nice. And I said, no, those are review units, but they are really nice. And it was really cool to see somebody that had no idea about these speakers you know, I don't watch the channel, whatever, um, but come in and compliment these speakers. And so from a design standpoint, again, these are very well designed. They're well executed, well thought out, and they're not complicated. They just seem to work. All right, before we talk sound quality, let's talk power handling. These speakers run at a nominal impedance of four ohms. So you need to make sure that your amplifier can drive speakers at a four ohm load. I tried three different amplifiers and all of them drove these just fine. I used my Monoprice Model 7 channel amplifier, an older Yamaha AV receiver, um, circa 2008, and also the a two channel amplifier from SMSL, the DA9. I just got that one in for review and that review will be out in a few weeks. But um, I tried that as well. And again, all of them drove these speakers just fine. But you need to make sure that your amplifier can drive a four ohm load. All right, so now I'm gonna play a quick audio sample just so you can hear that these speakers do make sound. So why am I so impressed with these speakers? Let's move on and talk about sound quality. After I finished the break-in period, I sat down to watch movies and I started with Blade Runner 2049. Because these are THX Ultra certified, I was like, can these give me that big, bold experience that you're gonna get out of Blade Runner 2049? And these delivered. 
no issues whatsoever, regardless of volume level. Normal listening level, reference level, sounded the same, rock solid, right? So it's like, okay, that's cool. Let's move on to something that's not as complicated. I picked a few movies from like the 60s and 70s. It's a Mad Mad World, you know, Dirty Harry, those types of movies, just to kind of see how it will play. And again, it played well. It's not just a big, bold experience. It played well with just things that are just normal movies, you know, dramas, romantic comedies, obviously your action movies, your sci-fi movies, it just played. They faithfully reproduce the sound that they are given. They are a nice neutral speaker throughout the frequency range, whether you're talking about the high end, the mid range, or even the bass. The monitor S, the surround, the center channel, the 2V subwoofer, all of them play nice and neutral sound. But not only can they play nice and neutral, they play the details nice and clean. They play the subtleties in a movie that you're gonna hear in, let's say, a mystery um, in a way that is just nice. I enjoy it. And that's why I say even the surrounds play nice and neutral. The bass from the 2V sub. Um, <laughs> it is ridiculous when you have it cranked up. I'm going to be honest. Your drywall is popping, your windows are shaking, the floor is shaking in your room when it is cranked up. But when it's at normal listening levels, it doesn't overpower the speakers. I typically run my subwoofers in this room at around 77, 78 dB. So it's just a little bit hot. You know, normal is like 75 dB. I run them just a little bit hot, right? But in playing that, the bass from the 2V subwoofer is nice, detailed, crisp, and clean. And this is run in vented mode. Um, there's no boominess to the sound. It's nice, tight bass. Now, if you drop in the uh, little foam seal that you can place in the vent, it does clean up the bass, but I'm happy to say that even in vented mode, I don't think that the bass is boomy. It's nice, tight, and clean. I did play a 16 hertz tone and I could feel it in my chest. It was great. But I think of this as controlled fury. When you crank it up, it pressurizes the room. The drywall is popping, the windows and floors are vibrating, people are complaining. I mean, it is just ridiculous. But then once you turn the volume down to normal listening levels, let's say less than 80 dB or so, it plays nice, tight, detailed bass that doesn't overpower the front sound stage. And speaking of the front sound stage, one of the things that I traditionally like is I like tower speakers for my left and my right. That's just my personal preference. It gives the volume that I want, but they sent me the monitors. So I'm, you know, listening to the monitors. And honestly, I kind of like the fact that they sent me the monitors because the monitor and the center channel are the same speaker. As far as I can tell, they are the same speaker. Just one is horizontal, the other is vertical. And what that meant was there was a seamless integration between the speakers as you do a pan from left to right across my front soundstage. I've never heard such a good pan across the front soundstage that I heard with these speakers in that 2V play. There was no holes, there was no gaps. It was just a nice even pan. So I recommend if you were thinking about these speakers, seriously give the monitor as some real thought if you're gonna get the center channel because I think that these pair very, very nicely because they're the same cabinet, they have the same volume, so there's a nice effortless pan. Now, as you pan around the room from the front sound stage, the surround S pick up without any issue whatsoever and they surround you in a nice bubble. I mean, these dipole speakers on the sides really, really work. It was just a seamless integration all the way around. Now. At the rear, I do wish that I had at least one channel in the center of this overall experience. They sent me a 5.1 setup. Traditionally, I run a 7.2.2 setup, so I have two rear speakers behind me. And I did notice that once you get to about the center, I wish that I had a little speaker right there in the center. But these surrounds do a good job as well. They do a great job even as well. These are all tonally matched, which is good. But again, when you pan around, let's say you're watching The Matrix and you're watching this shootout scene, and there's all these pans all the way around, all the way around, right? It's a seamless integration all the way around the room. It's just fantastic. Okay, let's talk music. And again, everything that I said in the home theater section pretty much applies with music. These are nice neutral speakers and they play nice detail at the high end in the mid range and with the bass. Now, I did play around with the different ports. I played totally sealed, one port plugged, and also all ports out. And I prefer these with one port plugged because I cleaned up the bass a bit and it didn't go as low, but honestly, that's what the 2V is for. It can play, you know, deep, nice and deep. 
but one port in was my configuration that I like here. I also prefer these to be towed into my listening position because that gives me a nice stereo sound that I'm looking for. When I towed them out, I kind of lost that stereo sound a bit, so I would definitely tow these in personally. I also played around by amping these speakers, and I did notice some additional detail and overall clarity, I would say, with the sound in the treble and in the mid-range when I buy amped these speakers. So if you're into that, I would definitely give that a try and I like the fact that you have the option with these. Now, the only downside that I see about these speakers from a music standpoint is they're not as transparent as some other speakers. There's not as clean, I would say, in sound as some other speakers. They're nice and neutral, they play great detail, but I wouldn't say you can hear through them like you can some other speakers. But again, I think these things sound fantastic. Now let's talk about a comparison really quick. I did compare the Monitor S to the Heiko Aurora 1000s, which is a tower speaker with dual eight inch woofers. And I'm gonna say that this is not a 100% fair comparison, but I did not have a 1723S tower speaker to compare to, so I did the best that I could. But I did compare the two. So the Aurora 1000s is a dual eight inch driver, and this is dual six and a half inches. And what I noticed between the two speakers is that, again, the Monitor S is neutral, whereas the Aurora is just a little bit bright. It's not as bright as my reference premiere uh, RP260Fs, but they are a little bit bright. They're kind of in between those two speakers. So if you like a little bit of a bright sound, I would definitely go for the Heiko Aurora's. But if you are looking for something that's a little bit more neutral, definitely check out, let's say, the 1723S Tower or uh, or the Monitor S like this. And speaking of which, let's play a quick audio sample so you can hear the difference between the two. Okay, hopefully you could hear the differences between the two, especially in the top end. You could hear that they were a little bit brighter. And I also say in the bottom end, I thought the Heikos did a little bit better with the bass. But again, that's dual eight inch drivers versus dual six and a half inch drivers. I suspect that if I had the Aurora 700, which is dual uh, six and a half inch drivers, this would play a little bit better bass detail, but that's just a, sus a suspicion. I haven't actually tried it. But overall, I think the Heikos are great speakers, but these are a little bit more neutral, and I personally prefer these a little bit more because of their neutrality. Okay, so let's wrap this up. Like I said, the 1723S line has become my new favorite set of home theater speakers. From the design and build quality to the sound quality that is impacted by the design, I think these are great speakers but they do have a little bit of a downside, and that is the overall price. They're not inexpensive, right? These are not free. I think the Monitor S is right around $1,900, and these surrounds are, I think, $1,500 for the pair. You know, so you're going to be into these speakers for some money, and I don't want to ignore that, but I'm not so sure you can find speakers that sound this neutral for a lot less money. I'm not gonna say you can't, because I haven't tried every speaker out there, but for speakers that sound this good and they seem to be built to last, I think you're getting a really good value. So I don't have any qualms about making this my highest recommendations for speakers for home theater. They work for music too, but for home theater, this is just a great setup. And like I said earlier, I recommend the Monitor S and the Center Channel. I like towers, I like bookshelf speakers too, but the Monitor S just blended very, very well. Uh, the other thing that I'll mention as well, or I'll kind of address here. Some of you may be asking, so is this your next speaker? I'm gonna tell you that it is at the top of the list, point blank, and there's the competition is much further down. Um, but I'm not gonna commit just yet, only because there's one other pair of speakers someone said I should listen to before I you know, make my final decision. But these are definitely at the top of the list. So again, I don't have any qualms recommending these speakers. If you wanna purchase these or anything else, use those links in the description below. Also, don't forget to give us a like, hit that subscription bell and that notification button so you'll be alerted anytime I upload new content. Thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you next time.